Hi everyone, Rishi this side. Today we'll be creating a dynamic countdown timer with the help of Figma variables. You can use the same technique to create a clock or a progress bar counter. We'll learn how to create a loop using nested components. You can either follow along with me or you can watch the full video first and then try things out. I hope you have fun making this and hopefully learn few tricks along the way. So let's get started. So here's our viewport. Take the text tool. Let's create the first text layer. This is going to be a seconds layer. Press Command R or Control R to rename the layer. Let's call it seconds. And let's grab a copy out of it by pressing Option or Alt and doing click and drag to make a copy. Let's rename it to minutes. So this will be our minutes layer. Now to assign variable to this text layer, let's create a couple of variables. Go to this local variables and hit this create variable icon. There are primarily four type of variables offered by Figma as of now. We'll be creating a number type of variable. Let's call it seconds and we can assign a default value. Let's assign value of 59. Let's create another number variable. Let's call it minutes and assign a default value of 10. So now our variables are ready. We can assign them to these text layers. Select this, click this small variable icon. So let's assign this seconds variable to this layer and click and click the minutes layer by the minutes variable so now our variables are binded you can see if we change the variable value it will automatically be updated in the text layer as well now let's combine these together press command option g or control on g create a frame let's rename it to timer create this as a component now we'll be adding a couple of conditions in the prototype window and let's see how we can convert this into a countdown timer let's just drag a copy out of this in our viewport go to the prototype window select the timer component let's add an interaction it will be the after delay interaction And let's add a condition here. So what we are saying here is after delay of one second, we will be checking if our seconds variable is greater than zero, then we need to do an action. So we are saying if 59 is greater than zero, then Set the variable seconds to the current value. So it will be again seconds minus one. So essentially what it will do after a delay of one second, it will check if the seconds is greater than zero, which is the case, it will be 59. Then what Figma will do, it will set the seconds variable to seconds minus one that will be 59 minus one so let's see this in action select the viewport hit shift and spacebar to see a preview i'm not sure why it's subtracting two digits but we will rectify it but as you can see it is only happening for once so to create a loop We'll do one more thing. Go to the design window, select our timer component, add a variant, and let's call it loop back. 
code again let's go to the code type driver we'll say after delay of 1000 seconds it will check the condition and let's add one more action here we'll say change to the loopback variant and it will be instant now select the loopback variant delete this condition add again after delay one millisecond change to default so essentially what will happen after a delay of one second it will switch to this variant second variant loopback variant and after a delay of one millisecond will again go back to the default variant and once it hits that it will again check this condition so essentially what we have done we have created an infinite loop between these two variants so let's see this in action so now the calculations are working fine now let's update our minutes variable so let's see once the seconds variable is set to zero it will not fall in this condition because zero is not greater than zero it is equal to zero so it will go back to the else statement so what we need to do is once the seconds is set to zero or it has reached zero value we'll reset it to 59 so let's say set variable seconds to we can just write here 59 so let me just reduce the default value to 5 just to see things in action 5 4 3 2 1 as it hits 0 we are resetting it to the 59 value and now let's go back update our minutes variable so in the same else window we'll do one more thing we'll add set variable minutes to minutes it will fetch the current value minus so as soon as we hit zero it will fall in the else category it will reset the seconds to 59 and reduce the minutes from its current value to minus one so let's see this again in action hit space and sorry shift and space bar Five minutes has been updated so this is the basic technique behind creating a countdown timer and remember we don't need to add two conditional statement on both the variants the second one is just to make a loop out of this component since we have our variables already attached in the second variant as well we are having a proper calculation so let me just show you show you the example component here i have just added few ui elements as you can see let me just zoom in a bit more i have added a couple of highlights to stroke and uh, drop shadow and inner shadows just to stylize it a bit and here I am adding an additional layer of blur text. They are not binded to any variable. It's just used as an artifact to show a digital screen behind the updated text. I hope this was simple to understand tutorial. Let me know in the comments if you have any doubts or any ideas you want to try out using the same technique. Thanks again for watching.
See you in the next one. Bye-bye.